Welcome back to the Sportsmax Zone. We bowl things off with cricket two days before the start of the first test of their three-match Richards Botham Trophy Series. Hosts England have revealed their 11 to take on the West Indies at Lords. Jimmy Anderson, England's leading wicket-taker in test cricket with 700 scalps, will be playing his 188th and final test match. Come Wednesday, the full playing list reads Zach Crawley, Ben Duckett, Holly Pope, Joe Root, Harry Brook, Ben Stokes, the captain, Jamie Smith, Chris Wokes, Gus Atkinson, he'll be on debut, Shoa Bashir and uh, James Anderson. And here's a reminder of the West Indies squad currently in London. Craig Brathwaite, captain, vice-captain Alzari Joseph, there's Alec Athenaise, Joshua De Silva, Jason Holder, Kavim Hodge, Tevin Imlach, Shamar Joseph, Mikhail Louis, Zakari Makaski, Kirk McKenzie, Guda Kishimoti, Jeremiah Louis and Jaden Seals. Meanwhile, the former West Indies captain Jason Holder says he missed Test cricket and is happy to be back in the fold. Here's what he says I miss Test cricket. This is my first Test match in a long time, so I'm looking forward to it. I'm just happy that I've been able to still get the body up and going and being up for the challenge here. The guys took a lot from that Test victory in Australia. We've been doing some really positive things over the last couple of months. And I think as a young side, the main thing is just to keep learning. What we have in the dressing room is some special talent, no doubt about it. It's just a matter of us just playing some solid cricket and they'll have uh, just to believe. It's time for someone to break the shackles and there's no better time for us to come here and beat England. The West Indies are current holders of the Richards Botham Trophy after a hard-fought 1-0 series win in the Caribbean in the 2021-22 season. But it's been 36 years since they last won a Test Series in England. And joining us now to preview Wednesday's first Test and Series, veteran cricket journalist Joseph Redsbarrier. He's been in the business for over 50 years, speaking to us live via telephone now from his home in St. Lucia, even though he's originally from Ghana. Joseph, welcome to the Sports Mac Zone, sir. How are you? Well, thank you for inquiring. I'm fine. Um... I uh, looking forward to the opening day of the test match, but I'm a little concerned, Lance, that we are badly prepared. I think we are undercooked. Um, I think we should have gone up 10 days earlier in England. We really should have negotiated for a four-day first-class game, and uh, I, I, I fear that... Um, in that atmosphere, lots of rain in England, it's going to be a little green. It could be a perfect day for England. Yeah, and uh, just to emphasize the point that you're making, Reds, about preparedness, um, a lack of, of test cricket for the West Indies these days. Um, they were in Australia six months ago playing test cricket. Many of the players would have last played red ball cricket outside of the tour match they just completed back in mid-April when the regional first class season ended. So there exactly. is concern, Reds, as you're pointing out, that our, our red ball game isn't really, you know, high on the agenda at the moment for our players, no, through no fault of theirs, of course. Well, I don't know if we got caught up in hosting the World Cup, but we just seem to have forgotten the fact that we are going to England to play England in English conditions. The farewell of Anderson. Can you imagine the atmosphere at Lords? Every seat has gone months ago. And uh, I think we should have sent our team up there 10 days before. I'm repeating this because I am fairly concerned about our ill-preparedness. We are on the cook. And I did listen to a, a podcast um, where Mike Arterton was saying that Jimmy Adams was very confident about the, the three-day game that they played against a very inexperienced side. He was happy with the conditions. But he was saying that the West Indies looked undercooked. And someone else was saying that our best part of our team is maybe the potential of our bowlers. But uh, if you look at the batting, I mean, other than Braffitt, you have a number of people playing their first test match 
in England, and you know, it really is almost uh, a bit fr frightening to know what can happen on an old on an overcast, slightly green pitch as lawns. Yeah, and the fact is, Reds, that history doesn't favor the West Indies here, even, even though the team has done reasonably well against the English in Caribbean conditions. No Test Series win in England in, in 36 years for some teams that, you know, on paper would probably, over the past 36 years, been 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 stronger than this current side. Yes, um, and, and talking about the current side, um, I, I listened to Fazir's um, 11. It's almost uh, the same as mine, but I, I fancy that we should play almost the same team that we ended up with victory in Australia. Of course, Holder comes in for Graves. Uh, I am n not in, in favor of playing Modi. I think we need to play the extra batsman um, in, in St. Clair who got 51 in Australia, and you don't buy runs in Australia in the supermarket. Uh, like just as an extra insurance policy, we need to bat as, as, as deep as possible. Yeah, and Reds, do you still, I mean, you already said it, you think the team is undercooked, but I'm thinking about an England side that, of course, will have two players making their debut in Gus Atkinson and Jamie Smith. They also have the 23-year-old who will be keeping. So it's not like the, the side, it's, it's also fairly young, the point I'm trying to make. So I well, think we have to put that into consideration. Well, there's not too many new faces, really. Um, the young keeper, surprisingly, has played more white ball cricket than red ball cricket, but they have moved away from a fairly solid keeper, and uh, they are obviously looking down the road to the number of test matches that England will have to play. So I think they're, they're, they're looking to, um, to bring on people, they're looking to bring on people. Um, uh, but, but, you know, if you look at the England batting, um, it's, it's a fairly good lineup. I mean, it, you know, only Bairstow, um, who, who's been left out, they, they don't have a couple of rookies in there. But, you know, Engl English players play a lot of first-class cricket, unlike those in the West Indies. So they may be two new caps, but they probably have a number of first-class matches under their belt, maybe well well over 30 or 40. Yeah, well, Reds, of course, I take your point. But I want to spend some time now talking about the man, Jason Holder. Uh, the last time he played was in 2020. That was during the COVID um, pandemic. And, of course, you know, we saw a different sort of West in his team. He comes back into the setup. I get the sense that he's a bit more jovial. He doesn't have the burden of captaincy, of course. Um, he's still a leader in the dressing room. What do you expect, Reds, with the wealth of experience that you have from Jason Holter? Well, he's the most experienced person we can, we, we can draw on. Um, it's what the workload is, is going to be. Um, if Sinclair can bowl an effective spell, especially to the left-hander, uh, we can rotate what is potentially a very uh, decent attack, I think. Sharma Joseph, if he, if he can produce anything like he did in Australia, um, he can really ask questions to, to the English batsmen. He's not going to get the same conditions that he, as he, he had in Australia. It's going to be seamy, uh, but it's not going to be quick. But, I mean, Seals and Holder did have very good experience early in the year in England, so they, they, they should be ready and weary to go. Azari Joseph has got to answer some questions. He's really got to put his hands up and uh, bowl some very important spells. England is going to attack us. What we must not do is panic. Um, if they attack us, they also are going to give us uh, a chance. If they look to play attacking cricket, they will open themselves maybe towards losing wickets. But in the conditions, I hope that the West is, if they win the toss, they, they in fact should bowl. 
Yeah, and you touched on the man just now, Jaden Seals. He missed the Australia Tour Reds because of an injury. But, you know, you spoke about playing county cricket. He plays second division county cricket. He picked up 24 wickets in six matches. You expect him to really stand up for the team, right, with the ball? Definitely, as I said, the, uh, our, our attack has the potential once they're disciplined, once they, they don't, uh, you know, fall into... Uh, too much of an attacking feel. Um, we, we, we've got to expect that they're going to attack our bowling because of, of the style that their New Zealand coach wants to play. But if we can have the discipline, if we can build some pressure, bowl the right line, bowl the fourth stump line, and we'll be, be able um, you know, to, to keep our heads on, uh, we could ask a, a few questions. Lance, what do you think? of me playing the extra batsman in Sinclair. Yeah, I, I quite like that idea, Reds, because I have a lot of time for Sinclair. Yeah. I like his confidence, and I think he's a good all-round cricketer. So um, I, I agree with you that I would, I would like to see him get, get, get that opportunity. I want to speak quickly, though, about Jimmy Anderson, Reds, because I had been looking in one of my cricket chat groups recently, and there's been a lot of talk about his place in history and where he, where he stands. I know there was a point at which people felt he was far more successful in his own home conditions than in overseas tours, which began to change, to be honest, to, to the back end of his career when he started to do a, a little bit better outside of England. But um, where does he stand as far as you're concerned in the history of, of, of all-time fast bowlers? He is right up there. Never, um, you know, crossed the line of being quick, but uh, he is substituted being quick with the subtle variety he has got, um, a natural move of the ball. Um, he's looked after his body lance. He has a very simple economical um, action. And, uh, you know, he, he is a master of his craft. And I think the motivation of him playing his farewell test, the opening test against the West Indies, it's going to be huge for him. I mean, just a few days ago, he was saying, I'm bowling as well as I ever bowled. And, um, you know, we, we, we can expect, um, you know, a very testing time from Anderson. They will probably bowl him in short spells, in short spells. Uh, but, uh, you know, they, they, it's not just Anderson we're facing. There are other, other English bowlers who, in their conditions, uh, are going to be a, a, a bit of a handful. Yeah, and he's just a couple of days reds away from his 42nd birthday, but he's being labeled a reluctant retiree because he, he on his own steam, you know, feels that he has some more to offer. But um, England has a plan for the future, and we can't dispute the move to um, move him aside and honor him in the way that he deserves and uh, make room for some younger ones for the future. Typical of England to start to look after their players, to involve them. And there's been a cry over the last decade that we have not involved our former players. Here is England clearly identifying a role for Anderson. And that we, 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 we have not done. We have not done. We have not used our great players to work with our fairly inexperienced um, shortest first-class season in the world. The former players really should be brought in to work with this young crop of players we have. Yeah. All right, Reds, as usual, always a pleasure talking cricket with you, sir. And um, I'm sure we're going to do some more previewing of this test match on Tuesday's show. But uh, take care, Reds. I know um, Beryl had its brush with St. Lucia. I'm happy that it wasn't, you know, was worse than it was. Um, I know Grenada and St. Vincent and the Grenadines took some hits. And we've had some deaths as well because of Hurricane Beryl. But um, we send our greetings to the rest of the Caribbean, um, your neighbors there in the Eastern Caribbean, um, to, to hold tight and uh, uh, all the best for the recovery plans for the, the country's worst hit. Nice of you to invite me, Lance, and I'm very happy that you all took care of that young lady in all white this evening. <laughs> Thank you, Reds. All right, Reds. Back with more on the Sports Mac Zone coming up after the break.